Well, hello. Welcome, 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 my friends. We appreciate you chiming in to the God's Love Bank Facebook Live show and program. We want you to know that we appreciate you being present with us today. Uh, we're always happy and encouraged when we see people who are tuning in with us on the God's Love Bank uh, show. And I call it a show because it is focused on Romans chapter 9, verse 17 through 23, where Paul talked about Pharaoh, where he told Pharaoh that he rose him up for this very purpose. And he gives us a definition of purpose. It's when you show God's power, when you proclaim God's name, and when you make known God's glory. And basically, that's what the God's Love Bank uh, Facebook Live show and program is really all about. I want to show God's power, proclaim God's name, and make known God's glory. So I decided that uh, it can be a show. At times, there will be uh, information from this uh, Facebook Live show that will be a show. Then at times, it will proclaim God's name, pro proclaim Jesus' name. There'll be some preaching and teaching. I just got too much preaching and teaching in me to stop doing that now. And then the other thing is to make known God's glory. We want to take God's love bank to a global level. And everybody that chimes in with us, especially those repetitive, uh, uh, committed people who chime in with us, we're not just coming to a Facebook Live show. We're talking about a movement. We're talking about a community. We're talking about people who have made up their mind that they want to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ globally. And what I've done is I've taken the last 40 years to test, prove, and try a program called God's Love Bank. And God's Love Bank program has been taught throughout the whole United States of America and overseas as well. I've traveled to hundreds of churches I've taught the God's Love Bank material, and for 40 years, we have been basically using the God's Love Bank material at the Ministry Church of Christ uh, all this time. And there are some things that has proven to be true. So we've tested this material. We've tried it. Uh, uh, we have utilized it in various arenas. But most importantly, you're going to see me focusing more on how to build and live in your new self-love. That's what this program will focus on more than anything else, how to build and live in your new self-love. And hopefully I want to get to some information today that help us to focus on how to live and build your new self-love. That's the primary purpose of, of this God's Love Bank uh, uh, show and program uh, is, to, is to show God's power, it's to proclaim God's name and to make known God's glory. So we have a number of people who uh, continue to chime in with us on a day-to-day -day basis. We have this program Monday through Friday, five days a week, one o'clock central time. And we got people who are chiming in from all over the world at this particular time. And we want you to know we appreciate your presence. Now, those of you who get on the screen First, I can call your names, but then there are others who come along later. Good to see you, Ian. Good to see you, Sharika. Good to see you, Kevin. Good to see you, Roz. Good to see you, Kenan. Good to see you, Jerry. Good to see you, Johnny. Good to see you, Jeannie. Good to see you, Carolyn. Good to see you, Charzetta. Good to see you, Coral. Good to see you, uh, Tiana, I believe it is, Smith. Good to see you, Wendy. Good to see you, Janice. Good to see you, Nathan. Good to see you, Ollie. All of you have been talk and learning more about the God's Love Bank program. Now, let's be clear. We are not just having a, a, a show and a program on a day-to-day -day basis. We are equipping ourselves to be ready to teach the gospel globally via internet as well as in presence. I'm going to be having conferences. I'm going to be having institutes. And we'll talk to you more and more about that. I want to get to our message today. If you look on the stream, understanding how new self-love matters. Let me back up. Hashtag how new self-love matters. The notion of hashtag is really when you have a topic of importance uh, that you use in social media and also in the internet and people understand hashtags 
hashtag means this is a subject of grave importance. And certainly that is what we're talking about today. So let me tell you what I want to do today. I want to just address certain things today, but I also want to get uh, into, let's learn more how to live in our new self. And I want to give you some scenarios on how worthlessness, old self, worthlessness, and new self, greatness works, and some scenarios on how it affects your family life and relationships with people that you work with on a day-to-day -day basis. But for now, hashtag new self love matters. So let's go further into this now and talk about this whole notion. Now, you know, this month, the core value is new self excellence. Somebody says we cover this every week, every day. Absolutely. You know why? We want you to be able to meditate on this, internalize this core value so it will work with automaticity when you need it in your day to day life. So let's quote this value, new self excellence. The excellence of faith to see the invisible, say the impossible, so the incorruptible, believe the unbelievable and expect a miracle. Now I'm closing my eyes, knowing that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh within us. All that I ask or think according to the power of the Holy Spirit that works inside of me. Now keep in mind, that's the value. Now, this core value this month is a challenging value to make sure that we all live in excellence of faith. And remember, there are five different levels of faith. We talked about that. And those of you who are chiming in for the first time, we value you. Uh, we encourage you. Here's what we want you to do at the beginning. Make sure you uh, understand what your uh, what your old self love is. You can do that by going to my screen. I mean, going to my website. Uh, if you look on the screen, oselfnewself.com. You can learn what your old self love home base is, first base, second base, and third base in three minutes. And you can also learn what your new self love home base is. You can also <clears throat> go to my website, godslovebank.com. I recommend that you get... <clears throat> my books, because everything I'm covering is in my books. Now you gotta remember that this is over 35 years of material that's relevant and easy to understand and you can use it today. So it's an investment and I'm not trying to sell books. I'm trying to teach a lesson. Uh, I'm trying to get across a message to the world. Godslovebank.com matters. And, and uh, so uh, once you get that, then we want you to always focus on uh, the notion of New self-love matters. Okay, now, so we got this understanding about our value, new self-excellence. Okay, let's go further. Now, the reason we are focusing this uh, particular time on understanding Black Lives Matters is because I got a lot of friends who are, happen to be Anglos, happen to be white, happen to be Hispanic, happen to be Latino, happen to be uh, in different color houses. And uh, uh, this understanding of Black Lives Matters is something that's pressing in our society today, and we need to understand it. And I want to suggest that uh, people who have learned and studied about God's love bank can come to the table and understand Black Lives Matter in such a way that they can communicate with every human being so we can have discussions about Black Lives Matter. So that's what we're focusing on, but let me bring us on. Okay, now, we encourage everybody to come on the show to use the, the tool of thinking called the Daily Prayer Macro Strategy. What it is, it is the central strategies that I found in the prayer life of Jesus that I macro modeled and I put it together and created what is called the Daily Prayer Macro Strategy. If you want to have a perfect day, start your day off with this prayer macro strategy and continue in it as much time as you want to. But for today, I want everybody who is chiming in with us to quickly go with me. I want to show you something about the prayer macro strategy. Okay, so today, uh, praise God at least seven times for something uh, uh, for uh, something that you're thankful for. You can just praise him for his names. Thank you, Lord, for being Elohim. Thank you, Lord, for being Jehovah. Thank you, Lord, for being Jehovah Jireh. Thank you, Lord, for being Jehovah Shalom. Thank you, Lord, for being Jehovah Shema. Thank you, Lord, for being Yahweh. Thank you, Lord, for being uh, El Shaddai. 
I just thanked the Lord seven times for who he is. And if you understand the meaning behind when all of those names, I just gave, I said a whole lot in a short period of time. <clears throat> now, you must examine your spirit, soul, and body every day because the Bible teaches in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse number five, examine yourself, whether you be in the faith. Know your own self. Prove your own self how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be a reprobate. But here's why I want us to focus today on the R where it says, request your petition from God today. That's based on Philippians chapter four, verse number six through eight. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be made known to all men. And, and it says, be careful for nothing, but with everything, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known unto the Lord. So here's where you come to the prayer macro strategy and you call up the, the Lord, you're communicating with him and, and, and you make your request known to him. And I recommend that whatever your fears, worry, doubts, pain, and bad news is, make that your prayer list and pray about those things first. And while you're praying about it, now you have turned those over to, to God. But I want us to join in what is called a prayer of agreement. That's when a person have a prayer petition and a group of people, it don't matter how many people, a group of people join in with a prayer of agreement. Okay, I want us, I'm talking about God's love bank recipients, God's love bank facilitators, new self-love life coaches, those who believe that God's love bank is a practical way of using the gospel of Jesus Christ to help change people's lives. And I'm going to ask you to join in a prayer of agreement with me on basically three basic things. So let's look at this prayer of agreement principle here. Jesus said, give us this day our daily bread. OK, so we can ask for the Lord what we need, our daily bread. So what does that mean? Your needs, your desires and your wants. So don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. Make your prayer list your fears, worries, doubt, pain, and bad news. Fears, pray about what you're afraid of today. Worries, pray about what you're worried about today. Doubts, pray about what you're doubting about today. And then whatever you're concerned about, pray about it. Now, why is this important, Facebook uh, folks and, and God's Love Bank recipients? Because I have gotten a lot of calls from people who are being overwhelmed, depressed, uh, they've gotten to a point where uh, uh, they're being weighted down because it is so much stuff going on today. Police brutality, as well as the protests, as well as the pandemic, as well as the wars and rumors of wars, as well as the elections and the battle that's going on in corruption. I mean, in Congress, corruption that's on the streets. It is so much going on that what S Satan would do he used the old self to come in the back door and get you worried, get you anxious, and you'll be focused on all of these fears, worries, doubts, and pain, pain and bad news. And consequently, it robs you of your power of your moment. So here's the prayer request. I want us to do a prayer of agreement for three major concerns in America. Number one, racial unity. Everybody, I want us to join in a prayer of agreement for racial unity. Now, whenever you have a prayer, if you can find the Bible to help you to pray in that prayer, it gives your prayer more power. That's why the Bible says all the commandments of God are yes and amen in his name. So let's pray for racial unity based on this scripture. I call this the new miracle. Ephesians chapter two, verse one, verse 14 through 16. For he himself is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is, the law of the commandments containing the ordinance, so as to create in himself, Christ, one new man, new miracle, in essence, from the two, thus making peace and that he might reconcile both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. This is the new miracle. Brothers and sisters, we can get along with each other when we know how to define ourselves. 
See, when I define myself as hashtag spirit, soul, and body, I am defining myself like God defines me. And when God defines me, he empowers me. But when the devil defines me, he controls me. So let's pray that we have a new miracle with the racial divide that's going on in this country. Somebody says, well, how are we going to do that? I'll tell you exactly how to do it. One soul at a time, starting with mine. You got to be able to be enlightened yourself that you are a spirit. You have a soul. You live in a body and that your spirit is the real you and your soul is your personality. And both of them live in the body, which is your house. you got to believe that. That alone is the beginning of the new miracle. Then there's another concern that we got. to, And, I, and I, I have to address these things because these things are bombarding people and they are anxious. They're concerned. They're being depressed. So we need to get these things out of the way. I'm not worried about racial unity now. You know why? Because Christ can reconcile us. We got to just do our part. The next concern is this upcoming election. Well, everybody's wondering who's going to be the next president of the United States. Well, here's what I recommend. Let's talk about the next president. Daniel chapter two, verse number 21 Daniel said, God changes the times and the seasons. He disposes the kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. Another translation said, God controls the course of world events. I'm talking about all over the world. See, the next president is going to affect people all over the world, including us here in the United States of America. So I want the kind of president that God can put in there because he can look down the corridors of time and see things I can't see. I trust God more than I trust myself. And God says he controls the course of the world events. He removed kings and he sets up others. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the scholars. I know we've talked about this several times, but you got to get this in your spirit. You got to turn the election over to God. God changes times and seasons. He removes kings and he establishes kings. He gives wisdom to the wise men and he gives knowledge to those who have understanding. God says, I control human events. I give rulers the power and I can take it away. And you are the source of all wisdom and understanding. So let's just turn over the election to God so we don't have to worry about that. Another concern that we got to get out of the way so we can be free to operate with new self-excellence is healing from this pandemic. Well, how does that work? You remember back there in the book of, of what Solomon had built the temple, he had completed what David had in his spirit for many years. And Solomon had completed the temple and uh, this, this billion dollar uh, structure, it was worth 7 million back there then, billions now, this structure, this awesome uh, uh, temple of God was created and constructed after uh, something like, I think, uh, how many years, but over 300,000 men worked on it. And when they got ready to honor the dedication of the building, God made it known to Solomon and the people of Israel. If my people called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then and only then, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. That's a promise. I will heal their land. Now my eyes are open and attentive to prayers made in this place. In other words, God could not allow his glory and his majesty and, and his sublimity to come down into that temple until the people of God came to a point where they did basically five things. Number one, recognize they are called by his name. Number two, they have to humble themselves. Number three, they got to pray. Number four, they got to seek my face and, and return from their wicked ways. In other words, they got to repent. Then God says, I will hear from heaven. And what will I do? I will forgive their sins and heal their land. Let's be clear. United States of America has pretty much walked away from God. 
We always talk about how we believe in God, but let's look at the past history. Look at the way we operate. I don't even want to spend a lot of time there talking about whether or not we believe in God. Our, our, our dollar bill says in God we trust, but that is just something we print. What makes the difference is whether or not you got a righteous leaders and a righteous president who will lead this country in a way where it will bring about healing to this land. That's how we get to healing. Now, if you want to get healing privately, personally, here's five steps to take. You can take for personal healing. First of all, find a scripture which promised your hearing, your he healing. Number two, pray for your healing based on those scriptures. Number three, thank God daily and hold the confession of your faith until your healing manifests. Number four, keep confessing what God's word says about your healing, not what people say, not what the television say until your healing manifests and then use the faith of God to heal small things to practice along the way. All right. And the final thing that uh, we need to be clear on and have a prayer of agreement on is the economics and provisions for us privately. And here's where you come in with the five parts of new self excellence, the excellence of faith to see the invisible. You got to see yourself being provided for, say the impossible, so the incorruptible, believe the unbelievable and expect a miracle. And I believe that God will provide for you in the midst of this pandemic and the economic downsides that's happening all over our world. Amen. Okay. All of that is important for us as uh, uh, recipients of God's love bank and new self love uh, uh, people who are trying to help others to learn to live with new self love. Now let's go further. We started out talking about understanding Black Lives Matters. Well, you can't understand Black Lives Matter until you understand some basic principles. So let's ask ourselves how we can do this. I wanna recommend that you get in spirit with the Holy Spirit. How do you get in spirit with the Holy Spirit? You use the triple A card and we've been talking about that. What does that do? Acknowledge the Holy Spirit as Lord. Number two, ask the Holy Spirit to lead you in your situation. So you start out with a situation. You acknowledge the Lord as the Lord of your life. You ask the Holy Spirit to guide you and bless you and help you. And then you abide with him until the end. Today, I had a cup of tea. So I put my tea bag in my teacup and I decided to watch it. So I let it stay in the tea cup and you could see the tea bag abiding in the tea cup. And you could see the tea uh, turning the water to a rich brown because of the ingredients in the tea bag now is saturating the whole cup. Why? Because the tea bag is abiding in the, in the cup. You got to abide with the Holy Spirit. You got to walk with the Holy Spirit. You got to follow his leading. Let me give you some, some suggestions on how that, that can happen. First of all, believe that you have a deposit of the Holy Spirit that's been given to you by God. In Ephesians chapter one, verse 13 and 14, listen to what the Bible says. And you were included in Christ when you heard the message of the truth, the gospel of your salvation. Now watch this now. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promise of the Holy Spirit. Now here's the clincher, who is a deposit guaranteeing your inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. What's your point, Dr. Roach? You have a deposit of the Holy Spirit in your soul and you get that deposit of the Holy Spirit by just obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ. But in addition to that, the Bible says of his own will begat he with us with the, with the truth. And it says that he, the Holy Spirit is poured out into our hearts. And we know that who lives in the heart, the spirit is poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So you gotta begin to understand you have access to the Holy Spirit. Well, how do you use it? How do you get there? Here's the five operations of Holy Spirit leading and the triple A card. Number one, you got to acknowledge the Holy Spirit in your situation. 
you acknowledge him, ask him to lead you, and then you abide with him. Then you'll find that he'll give you revelation about your situation. Then you'll find that he'll give you illumination about your revelation about your situation. Then he will give you an invitation as a result of the illumination, as a result of the revelation about your situation. And the invitation is a time for you to, to grow spiritually, to change. And all of this is done through the power of, of, of God. And then you'll have a, tr a transformation. Now, I know some of us just thinking I'm up here talking. So let's go to the scripture to show you this. All right, Ephesians chapter one, verses 13 to 21. I know I give a lot of information, but I'm going somewhere. If you'll notice it is all progressive. It's leading to helping us to know how to live with new self-love. Ephesians chapter one, verses 13 through 21. Listen to the Bible. For this reason, this situation, Ever since I heard about your faith, this is Paul talking to the church at Ephesus, and he's given them some information about the Holy Spirit and how to stay in the Holy Spirit and let him work in your life. He says, now, uh, 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 I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people, and I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you, watch this now, the spirit of wisdom and revelation. That word spirit there is the Holy Spirit. He's praying that the Holy Spirit will be able to work with the church in Ephesus. So Paul says, I, I, I pray uh, that God will give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Watch this now, so that you may know him better. What's the purpose of this wisdom and revelation that comes from the Holy Spirit? So you may know Christ better, grow spiritually. Then he says, I pray that the eyes of your heart. Now we know that the Holy Spirit dwells with the heart, but the human spirit lives in the heart. He says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, illumination. See, we, we have to operate on a higher level of consciousness when we grow spiritually. When I will operate with the excellence of faith, I'm not operating with the person who's operating with the medium of faith or with little faith or with small faith, you see. I have to understand that my consciousness, my awareness grows as I grow spiritually. And that happens because the Holy Spirit gives me enlightenment, illumination, in order that I may know the hope that he has called me for. The riches of his glory in the inheritance of God's people and his incomparable or incomparable great power for us who believe. Now there is the invitation. It comes from uh, the, the Greek word, uh, uh, there the, are the three Greek words for, for power. One is excu ex excusia, ex excusia. I'm not pronouncing it as accurate as it is. Another one is dunamis, comes from our Greek word, dynamite okay and 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 this power is is two types of power the exousia and uh dunamis the first one he says he that the glory he says that the riches of his glory of the inheritance of his holy people and his in incomparably uh, incomparably great power for us who believe that's the imitation that power is the same power. Now that's the exousia. That's the power that raises up Christ. It's the same power that raised up Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places, far above all authority, power. There's that exousia and dominion and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in this world. So what you got here, is you got those things we're talking about. God takes our situation, he gives us revelation, then he gives us illumination about a revelation about our situation, then he gives us an invitation to respond to the illumination and the revelation about our situation, and then he'll give us the opportunity to experience a transformation. All of this happens when you get in spirit with the Holy Spirit and you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you in your daily lives. And so 
That's how we understand Black Lives Matter. First, we got to understand how spirit, soul, and body matters. Why? Because if I understand spirit, soul, and body, I will have no problems articulating, talking about, discussing, and experiencing what it means Black Lives Matter. Now, white members and, and white friends and, and, and Anglo friends and, and Hispanic friends and people that I have good relationships with, here is where you got to come to the table and understand that when I understand hashtags, spirit, soul, and body matters, God created every human being with spirit, soul, and body, and that matters. Uh, there's another concept called the Imago uh, uh, theory, which says God created all human beings after his own image and after his own likeness. Therefore, if you deprive a human being of the dignity and worth that comes from the law of his being, which is love and liberty, and you take that away from him, it is not uncommon then that they will act out of character. And for 401 years, African-American people have been under the two modes of slavery, psychologically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and physically. And you will not be able to understand that unless you come to the table and say, hashtag, hashtag, spirit, soul, and body matters. What are you talking about, Dr. Rhodes? I'm talking about how to understand Black Lives Matter, because it's really not a problem what Black Lives Matter is really saying is that all lives matter, but Black lives have had some things happen in their life, so they use this expression, okay, let's turn all withdrawals into deposits, and all we got to do is just say hashtags, hashtag spirit, soul, and body matters. Now, when you do that, the next understanding you need to get is hashtag God's love bank matters. Why? Because spirit, soul, and body was created by God, Genesis chapter two, verse number seven. And then God created us as threefold spiritual beings, Genesis chapter one, verses 26 and 27. And when he got through creating all this, he said it was good. So he gave himself a love deposit. And then when, when he realized what Satan did, when the fall occurred, he sent Jesus. And when Jesus came, he came to earth and taught us that hashtag spirit, soul, and body matters. Why? Because hashtag spirit, soul, and body function and operate as God's love bank. These are the goods that we receive from God. It is the first original gift ever given to man, spirit, soul, and body. And what does it do? It functions and operate as God's love bank. Now, what does that do for me? It now allows me to do business in the bank of my soul in such a way where I can put off racism, I can put off stereotyping, I can put up prejudice, I can do business in the bank of my soul with my words, thoughts, feelings, actions, and deeds in such a way where we can heal the racial divide. We can pray to God to bring healing up with this pandemic. We can operate with economic success in such a way where we don't have to be destroyed by this pandemic and the economic downsides. Now I've said a lot and all I'm saying is real simple. Hashtag spirit, soul, and body matters. Why? Because it helps us to understand hashtags black lives matter. And when we understand spirit, soul, and body matters, then we can understand that our spirit, soul, and body function and operate as God's love bank. And once we understand that, then we can say hashtag, hashtag new self-love matters. Now that's where we want to hang our hat. New self-love matters. Why? Because we get love from being God's love bank. As I am God's love bank, I then am a recipient of the love that I get from being God's love bank. And by uh, reciprocating with that love, I can live with new self love in my, in my daily life. And that's what we're going to talk about next, but we don't have the time. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about old self love logic. Now, why? Because you have in your soul, in your mind and heart, you have some thinking that's your worst enemy. It's called old self-love logic. It is something that 
controls the streaming of the thoughts and the consciousness of your mind. So it's called O Self Love Logic. It may be defined as the principles that govern and guide the logic in your O Self Love. It is the reasoning within your old self, which creates a, a language and a logic that you use in your daily conversations with yourself. You wake up in the morning and one of the things you have to deal with is your old self love logic. We're going to talk about this tomorrow and I'm going to give you some examples of this. OK, so if 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 you uh, are not conscious, you can be driven by feelings of fear, worry, doubt, pain and bad news. And although the new self and the old self are the dual motivational nature of your soul, what you got to understand is whenever you're living with your old self love, you're being motivated and driven by fear, worry, doubt, pain and bad news. And whenever you're living with new self love logic, you are being driven by faith, hope, love, purpose and good news. So tomorrow we'll be talking about this. And if you really get into it, uh, tonight, I want you to go to my third book. I think it's called my fourth book. My fifth book is called I Am God's Love Bank and So Are You. And we're going to talk about old self-love logic on, on tomorrow. All right. Now, let me just now go to get some comments. Any questions about what we said today? Yesterday, there were some questions raised that I wanted to bring to our attention, if I can uh, bring that. But I'll look at what you have here. Any comments? OK. Brother Pittman makes a comment. I believe God is doing God is going to do a takedown in this coming election based on Daniel chapter two, verse number 20. Uh, 222. Amen. I, I believe so too. And then uh, this is Ruby Lynette Turner. She says, I've been studying from my website, sir. I'm Jennifer Watson's mother. Well, hello, Ruby. I want you to know we appreciate you. And uh, uh, Jennifer has said that you have been studying uh, uh, the, from the website and, and, and you've been consistent. I want to encourage you to keep growing and developing. The best of your life is yet to come, and the rest of your life is the best of your life. So keep on studying with us about God's love bank. Appreciate you from chiming in, Ruby. And then let's see here. Good to see my friend Wayne Hervey. He's one of the elders over at the Hanging Mouse Church of Christ, and he is a great supporter of, of the gospel of Jesus Christ and a supporter of God's love bank. He is in our family. He says also, good afternoon, God's Love Bank family. Great teaching, Doc. That's that's coming from uh, Elder Hervey again. Then here is, uh, this is Ruby Lynette Turner. And she says, the leadership has changed the constitution in order that we may live in their own sins. Huh. That's an interesting th statement. Let me see. The leadership has changed the constitution in order that they may live in their own sins. That's an interesting comment. Elaborate on that if, if you want to, so we can go and, and, and look at that a little more. All right, here is uh, Kenan Lejeurs. He says, you got to take 100% responsibility and then you got to be 100% accountable to God for how you are responsible for everything that's happened to you in your life. That's part of owning it. That's what it means to own it. Okay. Let me see here. I want to try to get something from question or comment from a lot of people are saying, hello, everyone. Good to see you. I'm going to have a conference and all of you folk who are on here, we're going to get together and we'll meet each other and we'll study together. Uh, and, and, and you'll get to see each other face to face. So keep on chiming in. Here is Jerry Graham. He says, in essence, I am in agreement with my God's love bank family every day. God is about to do a new thing, a new miracle. Ephesians chapter two, verses 14 through 16. How many of you really believe that God is reconciling man back to himself? It's called the hesed, the steadfast love of the Lord. 
in the Hebrew is called the Hesed, C-H-E-S-E-D in English. And in English it's H-E-S-E-D, Hesed. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. And so God is reconciling man. So what we got to do is do our part. Now, remember, we, we do our part very simple. One soul at a time, starting with man. And yesterday we saw an example of a brother, Noel Joseph, uh, who uh, made contact with the AT&T operator and then let her be introduced to spirit, soul, and body. And he just took it from there. We got to build relationships and then tell people about uh, the God's Love Bank uh, uh, program. All right, let me see here. Crystal Smith says, thank you for breaking that down again, Holy Spirit and our spirit. Teach, Brother Roach. Crystal is just a very encouraging soul. You know, see, a lot of us have not even understood, not that I'm speaking down to us in any kind of way, but we have a human spirit and there's the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit don't deal with your body. The Holy Spirit deals with your spirit. And when he deals with your spirit, then the spirit can move through the soul and deal with your body. But God is not interested in your body per se. Uh, uh, body posture and piety is all good. But what's God, what's important to God is get in spirit with the Holy Spirit so you can talk with him in spirit because God <clears throat> is a spirit. Amen. Let's see here. Charzetta says, declare in spirit, manifest in flesh. All right, Charzetta, elaborate. Let me know what you're saying there in more detail. Carl Nichols says, awesome delivery. Glad to be a part of the call. My friend, my man, Carl, we appreciate you so much. He says, thanks, Dr. Roach. Then there's Willie Smith. He says, I'm taking more comments today. Willie Smith, he says, the church has missed the boat on this teaching and we have been denied these great truths. I am going to speak to that because what Willie Smith is pointing out is so important because there are many members of the body of Christ dying on the vine. And a lot of it has to do with understanding uh, what it takes to grow spiritually. We have done a wonderful job of going numerically, but what we have not done is taught people how to grow spiritually. So if we baptize 75, 50 go out the back door. And then we have spent so much time dealing with the doctrinal matters, which are important, but people want to know how to live, man. You know, I can make three powerful points. That's a point for you to ponder, three points for you to ponder. But when you get home, you need tools to use so that you can work through your spiritual life. And what brother uh, Willie Smith is pointing out who, is that in some cases, we've missed the boat in this area right here. Okay, what do we do about that? Turn the withdrawals into a deposit. Hashtag spirit, soul, and body. Do what Brother Noel did. Talk to people about your old self-love story. Let them know what your story is about. We're going to be talking about that tomorrow. And when you do that, because everybody got an old self-love story, you develop a relationship with them. And pretty soon, God's Love Bank material will take it over from there and people will respond to it. That's why a lot of you are committed to it. Ruby Lynette has a long comment, so I'm going to take it. She says, I am merely referring to the president of the United States of America who has changed the Constitution so that two men may get married and two women may get married. The leadership, uh, the, the leadership had taken prayer out of school. All of these things allow sin to take place. You are absolutely right. And that's why I recommend when we are dealing with what we see on television, what we see in the news, what we see in the media, we need to ask a fundamental question. Let's break it down to its fundamental common denominator. Is what the person is saying righteous or unrighteous? Why that? 
because the Bible says you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self and its deceitful lust and to be made new in the spirit of your mind. Watch this now and put on your new self, which is created in true righteousness and holiness. I don't care if it's Barack Obama. I don't care if it's, it's, if it's Trump. I don't care if it's Bush. I don't care if it's whatever president, whoever gets up, watch their words, watch their thoughts, watch their feelings. And when they say something that's unrighteous, that does not come from God. When they say something that's ungodly, that's not coming from God. We have to operate in our new self so that when we hear words, thoughts, feelings, actions, and deeds, that's corrupt and ungodly, turn that withdrawal into a deposit and dismiss that person from being. Well, we got cut off there for, 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 for some reason, but we're back now and our time is far gone. We'll talk again. See you tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. Let's close with uh, the seven laws of sowing and reaping faith. Come on. What you see is what you say. What you say is what you sow. What you sow is what you reap. What you reap is what you are. What you are is what you give. What you give is what you get. What you get is what you deserve. What we got to understand is what you see ultimately is what you get. Amen. Let it be so.